Horse was super. He did exactly what I wanted him to do, and he came back good so far. What did you want him to do? Just that. I want him to work uh, a good five eighths out three quarters, but well within himself. The horse is super fit, and uh, it's it was just an outstanding work. A week out from the race, what goes through your head? What are you trying to manage in terms of the horse and his conditioning? Just trying to get him in there happy and sound, and uh, he's a very rare horse, so um, if he could just get over there in the starting gate the right way and, and get a good trip, he's going to be tough to beat. What makes him on the starting gate? You feel like you're making progress, <clears throat> taking him over there and getting him used to everything? <clears throat> yeah, he's visited the gate twice this week, and he did really well, and uh, there's no need to take him back. What makes him kind of unique to some of the other horses that you've He's just a, a naturally born rare talent. You know, this horse obviously has been that way for probably his entire life. I'm talking about a horse that's a $2 million yearling, and he's by a, a stallion that's went in the Hall of Fame, and the mother won a grade one, and he's just, he's everything you want as a trainer. Um, we're just trying to really stay out of his way. I mean, we, me and my team have been managing this horse, just trying to allow him to be who, who he was meant to be. Um, and don't do anything to prevent him from getting there, really. Seems like he has another gear, is that fair? I'd say so. I mean, he's got a tremendous amount of power and endurance. He might not be the fastest horse early in his races, but once he gets moving, it, it does seem like his stride's probably two to the horses next to him. Chad Tyler was on domestic product. Obviously, he rides Sierra Leone, but he was he rode the other horses as well in the Tampa Bay Derby. Talk to me about putting him on him as opposed to, to say, Sierra Leone this morning. Well, my rider, Chris Bond, knows Sierra Leone so well, and everything's been going so so perfect with that um, relationship there. I wasn't thinking of ever not having him work as a horse, meaning Chris. Um, with Irad having to go to New York, to ride today he wasn't able to work domestic product but Tyler was perfect because he's ridden him before like you said so I often do that on a daily basis with my workouts different jockeys come out that I use that are on my team and breeze different horses even if they're gonna ride them or not ride them just for various reasons that I have and uh, it was executed perfect and Tyler was quite happy with his horse as well yeah the post positions tonight I mean how, how important are they do we make too big a deal about it or not no it, it's tough it's a tough uh, process to get through um, there's, there's a handful of posts you'd really rather not have with certain horses, so you try to avoid those landmines and end up with a, a post that can't hurt you. It's much like training. Um, we weren't going to go out there and do anything to win the race today. There's plenty you can do to lose it. I think with posts, it's the same way. You're just trying to get a post that where you, you don't lose the race there. I don't think there's a magic post where you're going to win tonight. Are there, are there things that you've learned from previous derbies that you apply this year that help you with this derby? Yeah, certainly. There's things you, you learn as you go away. Little things, you know, go through them all. But, you know, how you approach the lines works and playing around weather, around Louisville, it can change, you know, day to day. And um, things maybe you shouldn't worry so much about because not as important. Other things about schooling the horses and getting them used to surroundings and such. So you learn from what you're doing here from things that worked well or mistakes and you also keep your eyes open to people around you that are doing well I mean, sometimes you pick up a few things there the ones you want to avoid are they be the far inside i think so i don't know that anyone really wants to be buried way down in the first couple of posts <clears throat> not so sure i want to be far far outside either um even though with sierra leone he's a, a bit of a closer a deep closer so you you drop off but Anywhere towards the middle seems, again, to be safe posts that aren't going to get you beat, and that's really what I'm looking for. The paddock in years past has been jam-packed. What do you think of this new setup? You know, I haven't had a chance to really look at it too close. I took a peek just now when I was going to Breeze. I have a horse in tonight, so I'll have a better idea after I'm, I'm in there actually working in the paddock. Yeah, talk a little bit about your training style. It seems like a lot of times when I've watched your works, when you work two in company, they seem very controlled. The riders have a hold, and it yeah. seems like that's fairly consistent with your works. Talk about your style, whereas, say, some trainers may let, you know, a high-profile horse, you know, gallop out way past a, a workmate, that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, Frankel, the guy I worked for, he really mm -hmm. taught me that. He, he liked to have horses in control, always maybe saving a little bit um, for what's ahead. Um, he always felt the horses moved better when they're against the bridle and held together. Um, I, I generally don't like to push my horses off the bit in the works too much. I think at that point their gait changes a little bit, and uh, 
uh, just for me, I feel my horses are sounder that way. Um, don't get me wrong, I want them to be moving along at the right pace, but um, very rarely I like to, what I want to see too much separation or horses being you know, pushed off the bridle ass too hard. It's just not my style. You've been so close in this race. Any lessons learned from having a heart broken a couple times? Yeah, certainly. You, 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 like I said earlier, you do learn a lot, and uh, it's a hard race to win. It's, um, when you come close and you're, you're walking back after the race, you, it does go through your mind if you're going to be able to get back here again. Because it takes a rare horse to get there, and it takes even a more rare horse to get to the quarter pole when most of the race has been decided at that point. You know, there's a ton of horses backing up, going the wrong way. Um, I've been in a couple derbies where down the backside you're already done, and uh, but I've been probably three times I can remember turn for home. I thought no horse had a chance, so it's hard to get here to have two good horses with a chance. It's, you, know, you feel very uh, fortunate. Given that you've been so close before, Chad, how would you? Kind of compare your confidence levels heading into this year's race with um, previous times you've come to the Derby with good chances. I mean, I, I feel pretty confident. I mean, I've come in here before with a couple of horses. I mean, Good Magic, I was pretty confident. Mm -hmm. The horse would run a big race. With, with Zandon, I felt super confident a couple of years ago based on his last work here. And, uh, and, and both horses got really good trips. They didn't have any excuse. They just couldn't quite get there. So with my two horses, I feel as confident that I'll have good runs in the Derby if they can get clear trip. You also have your Oaks Phillies, you know, obviously with regulatory risk going this morning. What, what did you want to see from her? Did, did, did you get you wanted out of that? I did. Her, she did a little lighter piece of work. She's um, She's been in, in steady work up in New York and, and been up there in the winter really uh, developing and she's come pretty far forward. She's not obviously not one of the main contenders in here. We decided to bring her down because she's just come forward so much she could get a piece of this race, maybe. It'd be pretty valuable for her. So we're going to give her a shot in there. Yeah. The ways and means, she come out of, did she just say she's moving good shape? She did. Mm -hmm. She did. She, um, luckily, the track the track <laughs> cooled off. Um, it was uh, it was such a, a, a fast work. But I will say, after I got to watch the work over a few mm -hmm. times and look at all the other fast works yesterday, it seemed the track was very, very fast. So <clears throat> I don't think it's going to hurt her. She came out of the race super. and. She's an extremely rare talent herself. Very, very fast horse. And um, so, you know, onto the Oaks with her, and I expect her to run well. Chad, she's had two pretty brutal trips, her last two, you know. I mean, she yeah. ran well, but I mean, did not really unfold the way I'm sure you wanted. Talk no. a little bit about those, and for that matter, the fact that she could still, you know, place. Yeah, no, she's she's super talented horse, and she hit, she's she's actually found trouble in all three of her starts. Even her debut, she was a bit tangled leaving the gate. So, her key, the key to her is going to be if she can leave there clean and forward. I want her very forward in the race, if not on the lead. Thank you. So, I, I'm assuming Kumo has her own team that picks out the yearlings. When did you find out you were getting Sierra Leone? Or when did you get it? And what do you get for the layperson for two point three million? Well, they. When they bought the horse at Saratoga, I knew I was going to um, get the horse because Peter Brandt was involved. We had spoke about the horse. Mr. Brandt and I liked the horse very much. Um, the Coolmore team, led by Paul Shanahan and B. Magner, they liked the horse quite a bit. So when they decided to partner on the horse, the understanding was if they got him, it was going to me. So I knew then, and I was quite excited about it. And You know, look, he's a super looking, I mean, impeccably made and bred horse. It doesn't mean they can run. I've had, you know, good looking well bred horses come to this barn before and they don't quite pan out to their expectations. But for this horse, he has. And uh, he's, he's really everything and more they thought when they bought him. What are the differences with dealing with a large ownership group compared to like domestic product where you're basically one person? Well, with? well, it's it's um, a good question, but it's a little, um, this it's um it's it's not your traditional large partnership for a horse. The, the the group that owns Sierra Leone, they're all like very experienced uh, horse owners that have already had tremendous success in the industry, and they um, they just they allow the trainers to really you know manage the horses. At least I, that's my experience with them, and uh, wait wait for some information and, and really follow the advice of what I'm doing. Um, they've had tremendous success and. I have to tell you, it'd be so rewarding for them to, it's one of the you know few races they haven't won, and um, they've done so much for the industry, we could go into each individual partner, their contributions have been massive. Um, 
for them to have success in the Derby would, would really be rewarding for me to be part of that for them. Chad, with the domestic product, he, you know, he didn't give much pace in Tampa in either either race. What can you tell us about him and how he fits here, why he fits here? The, the horse, uh, and that's a great, great point. The horse hasn't had good paces to run in, and he's been able to overcome it and run pretty pretty good races. I think if he gets some pace to run at, you're going to see this horse get the mile and a quarter the right way. You know, we're going to get Irad on the horse, which who, who he hasn't been on the horse, but obviously this his um, his career is just in peak form right now, winning you know Eclipse year after year. And um, I could see him if he could save a little ground in that first turn and maybe be in that second flight right behind the, the pay stool, hopefully. I could see this horse making the first run um, when they're turning for home and, and being in the picture. He's flying under the radar a little bit. He's a beautiful horse. And I, I will say he's always been highly thought of. His form's a little more spotty, mm. uh, a lot more spotty than Sierra Leone. It's not straightforward. In his debut, he caught some kickback and he didn't, didn't quite like it. We were all surprised. Uh, including the jockey, Flavian Pratt actually came out and worked him, and he, he, he begged to ride the horse. He said, I think this could be a derby horse. When he first worked the horse, he knew back then when he worked him, and he, he just didn't fire. So, you know, then he came back and won a good race, then he caught a muddy track in the Rems, and he's kind of been all over. But this year, we took the blinkers back off him. He's two really good races, and I, I do expect him to run well. Right. And then Sierra Leone looks a very curious horse. Yeah. Right? And I think I may have thought wind earlier that you've done a, a bit of schooling. Any concerns about the big crowd on, on Derby Day? And what no, have you been doing? no. He, he's a he's a very smart horse. He is a bit curious. You'll see him in the lane sometimes, kind of cock his head in and look. But we put a little blinker on him. That seems to have solved most of that. And he's a real gentleman of a horse. He, he's a bit curious, but he's very manageable. Yeah, they made some changes to the surface. Have you noticed much difference? I have. Um, I quite like it. You can see the color. It seems like it has a little bit more clay in it, which I think is a good thing. I. Me, myself, my preference is to, to race and train on, on tracks that have a little bit more clay on them, whether it be on the top or on the base of the track. I think it's more forgiving, it has a little bit more bounce to it. I've been pretty pleased with what I've seen here at Churchill so far on the track.